Yo, what's up YouTube? It is OG and today we are back. So we're gonna be doing something that I have not done in a very long time. I think I've only done it like once or twice to be honest. Uh, I'm gonna be commentating over uh, other people's games. So honestly, one of my favorite Brawl Stars matches of all time happened in the monthly finals this uh, past weekend. So it was R7 or Motomamas. Uh, versus cmg in the finals now cmg had a pretty tough round one they had to beat tribe gaming of course everyone knows tribe and uh motomamas had a pretty free round one uh just kind of like a lesser like super underdog team and uh yeah so i think prep definitely plays a part into monthly finals specifically this year since like you're prepping for like one team most of the time like for example motomama is probably just prep finals whereas uh cmg had to prep like semis really hard and east is super close uh like there's three teams that could make worlds could make uh lcq or could just not so it's like a really really close definitely a region to keep your eye on in the upcoming uh monthly finals but uh yeah motomamas they're usually on a ping deficit or a ping disadvantage as well uh they do live in like Puerto Rico and Guatemala um, but this month two of them the Puerto Ricans traveled I think to Miami or something so the ping's definitely a bit better there uh, Killer was still playing on high ping though he's from Guatemala I think it's harder for him to travel due to visa issues and stuff like that so yeah I was really like excited to just I didn't know it would be like CMG that they would beat Tribe they've been getting the better of them but uh, yeah I was definitely excited to see Motomamis on lower ping against uh you know some of the other best teams in the region so yeah i don't want to talk too much so let's get into the games before we get into today's video i just want to give a quick shout out to glitch energy so glitch energy has a wide variety of products to help you just become the ultimate gamer uh they have a lot of different formulas a lot of different vitamins on their website and everything else you guys can need to be at the peak ability to win some games in brawl stars and other games so yeah if you're ever feeling sleepy or you know you just need like you want to take it to the next level a little bit just try out glitch and make sure you guys use code stmn in the checkout for a 10 percent discount and yeah i'd really appreciate it use the code guys for stmn if you can thank you so much guys all right guys so uh the first set is gonna be um pinball dreams i really don't like that this is in comp i really hate this map but uh i do think that cmg has comp and you can already say they're up a game so uh yeah this one i do like i like the squeak pick a lot but uh they last picked ash into primo i think um which it's, it's a no no <laughs> don't do that um but yeah so they kind of counterpicked themselves but they wanted to be aggro they do have the macy which i like i think it's kind of hard into crow obviously i think it's really good into primo but uh Motomom is kind of known. They have like some pretty weird drafts sometimes. It doesn't really always work out, but uh, yeah, they kind of <laughs> stick to it at least. They're consistent. So um, yeah, RBM is going to be on the Primo, and it's a super good Primo game. So Macy is good into Primo, but I think Primo, it has like a lot of CC, which is a counter for Macy because you can just count, cancel the super if it gets interrupted at all. So yeah, they're kind of in a bad spot now. Uh, they're pretty backed up, and uh, I don't really like that from Luffy. I think it kind of gave them a goal free. Uh, I can see what he was going for, but, you know, uh, the flashy play, like, isn't always the right play. And <laughs> I play a lot of AC myself, so I feel like I, like, critique people pretty hard on it. But uh, Fade's going to do a jump up there. That's pretty interesting. I don't remember that. It's definitely going to do it just for position on the squeak. He is going to get a double slow, so it's really good. And as soon as that crow hits someone in the tank v tank matchup, like Primo versus Ash, it's just like the damage reduction makes it like really unplayable uh, for the other tank. Now, RBM should be able to just like kind of walk this in. Yeah, there you go. He's going to walk it in. And um, yeah, they're going to take the first set now. Uh, we just watched the first game because I felt like that one was kind of one-sided round. All right, guys, game number two, uh, set two. So CMG, I definitely think they have draft here as well. Um, so I think the weird thing about um, R7's draft here was the Jesse pick. Uh, I forget what exact order it went in, but it just didn't make sense because it's like a losing lane pretty much into like, and they have like a thrower they could have oh okay cmg had last pick and they could have definitely went sprout they chose for barley um i think barley is just kind of more consistent i don't know if he's on long dash too i forget 
But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. They put B mid, which I don't know if I like, but I think they're just out comped pretty hard here. Like as long as CMG doesn't throw, and even if like the Jesse gets a turret set up, like they have Barley for it. I'm sure that's another reason why they went Barley instead of uh, the Sprout, just for the turret as well. But yeah, everyone on CMG playing really good. I think it's a tough game, like I've been saying, for Mona Mamas. They're gonna solo slow Luffy and just take him out like that. And uh, yeah, Killer, you can just see he's like, Jesse landing a bell on like a two tile wide lane like it's not very fun I this is what I was talking about like they have like these weird drafts sometimes I don't think like sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so I guess you kind of like live and die by it but yeah this one at this point everyone's like sweet myself included I was like oh my god like congrats CMG on winning like monthly finals like I thought it was just gonna be a sweep because they did not look very good in the first two rounds Motomame is like I'll be brutally honest like they did not look very good in the first two rounds here at all. Alright, set number three. So if CMG wins this one, they do win the monthly finals. And uh, yeah, you can see, I think Moto Mames or R7, it's, it's hard when you team switch names, but they got a really free Dynamite game here. And uh, it was Dino last pick, which I think CMG, like, they're kind of like, I don't really like the spike pick just because it's so weak into throwers or something like that. When like the M's is weak into throwers too. And they do something really weird here where like, I understand like leaving the dynamite but you're not gonna like it's not like a real base race they're leaving like a damage gear dynamite on safe uh and on the other end like yeah they do a ton of damage but they have two people defending so uh i don't know why he max dashes into him there but i saw that and i was like that's really weird um but you know even with like all that like i don't think it defended well at all there to be honest um and they're still just like down by like 40 percent the dynamite's just been like damage here so i don't know like just kind of a bad call there um and yeah they're gonna go next one game number two now i think um Motomames is really good on this map i played against them in like some smaller tournaments and uh whenever it's on this map they always have a really good strategy so they like going max and uh they uh, it's like a base race but they're very good at like switching like the pressure like going up like one lane kind of and uh, just getting that off with Max. So they like the Max speed a lot for that. And a lot of the times they'll just like leave Max to like solo defend as well. So it's something that they're really good at and like something that's pretty unique for their team, like this map specifically. So I think they kind of got like, uh, you know, it was a very good map if they're down like, like O2 or whatever to get for them. Um, so I don't know, like that's just like my take. Like, I don't know if they like the map or not. They might hate it. They might be like, but I think they do have a good strategy and like a different thought process on this map specifically, uh, from my experience. So you see, they are going to kind of base race, but, uh, Toast is going to get on safe there and their safe's just gone. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of like, you can't let the spike ever get on safe like that, but it is still like relatively close, like closer than the last game. And uh, yeah, they're gonna get the Nita Bear, but Spike can just stand inside of the Nita Bear and just like get rid of it instantly before it really kills the Spike. So I think that's what he did there. So uh, good IQ from Toast to do that. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be like one shot in their safe here. So it's definitely been like really base racy this whole time. Uh, I think both teams could have played a little better with some of the defenses and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, it's hard in the moment, obviously. Like, there's a lot of pressure, like, a lot of money on the line, a lot of, like, world's points, etc. So, yeah, it's hard to really, like, blame anyone. All right, game number three, match point for CMG. So, I think uh, Motomames get some better defense. I do like their comp by a good amount. I just think it's, like, too free of a dynamite game. And uh, they're trying to base race, but... Nobody can really touch the Dynamite on their team, like Daryl kind of can, but I don't think it's that, like, it's amazing into it or whatever, like, Dyna can definitely kill Daryl. And if it's like this, like, you can see they're leaving him on safe again. I don't know why they let them damage gear on safe again, but they did. And, I mean, low-key, like, they're doing a ton of damage themselves, but he is going to come back, and he's going to help out on defense. I don't think he needed to, but it's better to be safe than sorry. You don't want, like, it to be done just like that. And uh, he did regen, which, you know, you don't want to do. So if you're a damage gear and you're on safe like that, you want to just, like, keep shooting, like, and uh, just keep that damage gear. But I guess he came back, so he's, like, ready to help out. So I guess it makes sense like that. And RBM with an insane Daryl roll there. That is, like, a very hard kill to pull off. But RBM is just so good on the tanks. Like, such a good player. Definitely one of the best players in North America. 
Um, and uh, for sure the best tank player in NA, and I don't think it's close. Uh, and you can just see, like, he's like a wizard on the Daryl, honestly. He is so good at tanks. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can see right there, Killer is trying to push up. Fade just leaves him alive. I think he thought he was going to tick with the M super. So that's pretty unlucky because they got, like, Nita in the aggro position here. Dinah is also there. And, uh, yeah, you can see Dinah is just kind of getting everything. Killer is going to get his bear up. I don't think it really gets any damage, though. Yeah. Fortunately for them, it was just, like, out of range of aggroing on the safe. But Zeus has been doing a really good job on defense there. Like, he knows his role. Like, like I said, like, I feel like they have a really good strat for this map. RBM with another crazy Daryl roll. He's going to take out Nita. The bear gets, like, no value as well. But it's really hard for them to push into this dynamite when it's just playing defense. Um, RBM knows he has to go for something. Gets another really good kill. He's just going to go there, like, to get aggro. He's staying alive. He gets as much damage as he can. RBM fought, <laughs> like, he had some heart in this one, honestly, like, watching it back, like, he was going kind of crazy, but I do think, like, they are kind of outcomped in this one, and, you know, you can say, like, they shouldn't have base race, but I think it's, like, kind of, like I said, pretty hard comp to win with. Alright, so next up, we got Double Swoosh, um, now, this is what I'm talking about, like, the R7 Monomame's, like, interesting drafts, they picked Rosa into amber it's usually like okay apparently they picked it by accident that's what zeus told me in my twitch chat so if they did that's like crazy like if they lost because of like accidental pick but i think it kind of if you watch how it plays out it like low-key like kind of makes some sense so it's on the buster which is a horrible matchup for buster buster is never able to win this and uh you can see like the Sandy is going to pinch as well. So they're doing Sandy mid, which was a strat that we used to do like a very, very long time ago, like 2019. And uh, it is like not bad here because you can just walk out peak, like get some hits in. Uh, you have to sleep now as well. So nice burn from RBM there. And uh, yeah, I think RBM, his first thing just needs whatever side the rose is on, just burn it. And you can see Killer is just like staying alive over there. They also got Cordelius, which uh, yeah, really good brawler. So the Cordelius, in my opinion here, just needs to like chain super the Amber like as much as it can. Just like this, runs in, mutes him, and just keeps killing him because the Amber is their only source of damage really. If the Amber is dead, it can't like break the grass. Killer can just like run around and like keep killing them. There's no way they can take out like Killer uh, with Buster and uh, the uh sandy as well you'll get a lot of sandy supers and you'll get some control from it but look every time he does this like they have to like triple pinch him uh if the grass is gone he does become significantly worse now luffy is gonna go down there and fade was so close like zeus was like cutting it very close there you could get that buster gadgeted if it was like half a tile closer fade is like the best buster i've ever seen too so he definitely would have hit that but zeus like playing it really like on a knife's edge just staying the perfect distance and they're gonna get countdown so i think uh and they do do this you gotta put the amber on the rosa and just get rid of all the grass uh because it's just like kind of unplayable like having a sandy and uh buster trying to kill a rosa that has like slow shields etc it's just pretty hard so yeah you see killer's playing it really good he's also like definitely one of the best tank players in north america he's on like 60 like he's on high ping right now i don't know like what it is but i'm pretty sure it's like 70 like 80 something like that so you know he's playing really good considering everyone else is on like low ping like i'm talking about, like low ping um but <laughs> Yeah, so they're going to switch. I like this a lot. They're switching it up because they know the Amber is going to be over there this time. So really smart from them to just switch sides. And uh, he's going to die, but they doubled the lane. So Luffy is just going to go in here and kill Fade and be behind Toast. Now, I think Sandy's all right into Cordelius. I don't know the matchup's like 100% still, but I feel like it's like not like the worst brawler into it for sure. And uh, you can see Killer does manage to run down RBM there. And uh, he's just trying to be annoying by that wall. He's going to go down, just tries getting as many hits as he can. Zeus just staying that perfect distance again from Fade. Uh, so Zeus has done like a really good job. I haven't been talking about him that much, but this whole set, like, he played very good mid, like very smart, just like very good positioning. And uh, you can see the grass is a lot harder. So they're going to be getting pinched down on that right side though. Because Rosa cannot play on an open lane ever. Uh, and I think he gets a slow up on the Amber. I don't know if he's going to get the kill. 
But uh, yeah, they're just trying to run down Toast. Toast gets a nice sleep there, and he's just got to back off. Now, Rizzo will manage to kill him, but uh, she's not going to get the gems there, so she does take out two, which is really good, and uh, just trying to get kills. Now, this game, I think Luffy needed to focus more on the Amber. I think he's been supering uh, Fade mainly, which you don't really want. Like, Fade's not really the threat for your team. I think it's just like the Amber, and uh, yeah, you can see there he is. Killer's gonna get another good kill, and they're gonna get Toast in spawn. And now they have total control. Fade does have the shield, so he can kind of just walk up and like body block. And uh, yeah, there you go, Luffy. Uh, but not really like that, but he had the right idea, I think. Um, but yeah, he does need to just keep chain killing the Amber, I think. Um, but yeah, that was a little unfortunate because they did have really good control up until that point. But he's gonna get a super back, and. Uh, yeah, you can see it's cl really close, 9-9, nine, nine, but uh, CMG is definitely in a better position here as well. He's going to super the buster again. Like I said, like it's not the best, but there, I don't, like he's not trying to. Faith's just kind of like in a good position to block it, right? So Toast is going to grab that 11th gem just so they can't reset it. But uh, yeah, this game is really close. I think Luffy had a really good positioning, and then he kind of like went a little too aggro at the end maybe. But um, you can see both teams like adapted really well. So CMG, uh, they did switch the Amber onto that left side just so Killer couldn't get in there. They could burn his grass, but then uh, Monomames also like went down. They doubled up the other side because they knew it was coming. So just like little mind games like that uh, that I really enjoy watching. So yeah, the it worked for CMG last time, so they're gonna do the same thing. Uh, I don't know if Fade really expects them to be doubling again. Uh, Toast doesn't because uh, he does get snuck on there and uh, yeah he is Zeus is gonna get a bounce shot off RBM there onto Toast and they'll get like the early gem lead here now Levy's gonna super and yeah he's supering the buster again you don't really want to do it but it's I don't think it's the worst like he's sometimes you do it just to heal up right on Cordelius you get the mushrooms you get to heal up uh, yeah I don't know <laughs> It's like a little sloppy from them right now, I guess, but Zeus gets a really, really good slow on Toast. That is huge. And Fade's going to have to get the gems here. Now, I actually think Buster mid, it's kind of like the same thing as Sandy. I've tried it here a few times. I don't think, like, Sandy's definitely better, but it's not bad because you have, like, the similar range. You have a shield, etc., and you have the gadget to catch the other mid out. But you do want, like, with this comp, I think the Buster to be more aggro uh, because Sandy's just not as much of a threat, I think, uh... So, yeah, it does make it a little awkward, and Fade does have to be careful about getting slowed. Um, so, Killer's going to make his way in there, and RBM still hasn't burned that side because Killer hasn't really been playing on but really good super from Luffy. And uh, once Luffy takes, like, RBM and uh, to the Shadow Realm, his teammates can do a lot more. Zeus is going to get a nice slow there off as well, and... Uh, yeah, that's going to buy enough time for Killer to get back out there. Killer's going to dodge the Amber Burn, but uh, yeah, that turret spot, like, I don't know how they get that turret out with their comp. So really, like, this is why Jesse is really good here if you don't have a good way to take the turret out. So yeah, it just buys a lot of time, a lot of control. They have to use all their ammo on it. You can get the slows off, etc. They did manage to get a kill there, so it was 3v2, so they could push up. But if it's 3v3 and you're holding there, that is, like, impossible to get out, honestly. So, Fade and RBM are going to get... Uh, Zeus going for that gem is crazy, bro. Like, I saw that. Like, that was actually crazy. I can't believe he did that and he got out. Like, a lot of people would be too scared, but that was, like, perfect, perfect timing. And I don't know if they could have caught him, but it definitely won them the game. So, just, again, like, Zeus played insane on mid. Really good player. Probably the best, like, first-year player in North America. It's his first year in comp, so he's just been, like, really good for the team all year long. But yeah, really well played from him there. So, the last game is going to be Knockout. Uh, they did first pick Gray, which I like. I think it's good. The only um, thing is, like, their comp, like, it definitely lacks some range, I guess. But I think that's fine, just with the meta and stuff. But you can see Zeus just doing, like, such a good job on RBM. He would have killed him there, but he literally just got his bandaid, like, in the split second that Zeus, like, hit that last shot and popped the gadget. So Zeus just, like, kind of tap in as well. Now, when Jean gets a pull, like, they don't have anything that can block it. So as soon as Jean gets a pull, like, Fade could TP out or something like that. 
Um, Toast could jump out. You don't really want to pull a Shelly, really. If it has Band-Aid, it most likely will kill you or like, get you guys low before you can burst it. Um, but the Gene Pool is just so good here, I feel like, into their comp. And, uh, yeah, you can see, nice hook there, but Killer's going to do a really good pull right back at him. And, uh, yeah, they're going to get a pinch off, and when it's 3v2 and knockout, it's, like, really hard, to be honest. So, really good pull from Fade, but Killer just kind of mashes it with a good pull as well. Now, Gene is just going to... That cactus being broken is actually pretty good for their comp as well. Um, Gene can just kind of hide in there safer. <laughs> and not really like that, <laughs> to be honest. He did take too much damage, the pull. And then uh, Toast hit some good shots on him as well. So, it's kind of... Both comps, like... It's not traditional, right? Like, traditional is like... You have like two long range lanes, something like that, like a thrower or something. But it's not like that at all. Uh, it's pretty aggro comps from both of them. Zeus is just trying to not give them super. Uh, Toast is going to get like half his Bonnie super there, which is really good for them. Definitely eliminates some of the threat from the gene pool. Um, but yeah, Fade does have his TP. So you could always do one of those like gadget tricks where you gadget and then super it back. But RBM is going to get pulled. So really nice. Oh. Toast, huge jump from him, and uh, yeah, Fade, at this point, Zeus and Luffy just have to cycle, like, blocking for it. I think Fade had to, like, it's really hard, but I think he's going to lose if he doesn't try going in there. At this point, he, like, he just does not have enough DPS. Zeus is going to be on the star power where you get a shield and movement speed. Like, he just physically can't kill it because they'll just, like, keep body blocking. Like, the clone has a separate regen from the main one. So there, it, it's just like over at this point, like which kind of sucks. I think he did have to look for it, like for a split second. Um, but you know, it's really hard in the moment. Again, I don't think that's really like you can't really blame anyone for that. That's just like tough in the moment. So it is match point now for the reverse sweep uh, for the monthly finals. <sighs> All right match point and uh yeah this one <laughs> it's like completely different from so fade is gonna hit a hook rbm is gonna try finishing him nice finish from uh rbm with the clay pigeons toast is gonna run down like they just run them down right this is what i'm talking about like aggro it's not like long range poke as soon as fade hooks someone if someone can hit him like once or twice they should kill him in my opinion but it's the same thing like if killer gets a gene pull like nothing can really block it like they should probably kill kill like killer uh you, you can't go in there so rbm's gonna do a really good job just he knows it's illegal you can't go in there bro sorry fade's gonna tp forward they're just gonna win like it's done like that so that's like how like different it can go like how fast it can go too like just like complete like 180 they didn't even give killer a chance to get a pull like they just caught him out twice um so yeah both teams very susceptible to like the gray hook or the gene pull and uh yeah that's how the games are going to be won just off of those gadgets mainly um so yeah match point for both teams now i think they're going to try doing the same thing again uh but you can see killer and luffy have been playing off each other uh luffy's going a little more aggro and killer is going to stay behind him just because killer can give him healing and stuff like that and uh yeah gene it's also like a healer so you got to keep that in mind now, they are going to go down, which I think uh, CMG definitely has early game comp. They have Clay Pigeons, uh, they have Greyhook, but when R7 get the Gene Pull, I think it, like they should almost always win the round. Uh, so it's kind of like they got to make something happen before Gene gets pull and can like kill one of them, right? So it's pretty easy, like both comps, pretty close range. For the most part, you just walk up, use the things, and you gray hook someone, and then you pinch them out. So, yeah, they don't want to feed Killer. Killer knows he's going to die. That round's over. There's nothing they can do. They have, like, Lola and, like, Gene into very high HP brawlers. So, yeah, the Cactus did get broken, too, which I think is really good for late game. But I don't know if they really go that route. But I forget. The only one you got to be careful pulling is the Shelly. But they're going to trade here. Luffy just gets his clone down in time. Toast had a good jump. You got to go for that, I think. Um, they did trade one back, but Luffy got the clone down just in time. I don't know how close Killer is to pull, but 
Like I said, the pulls for both teams is kind of the win condition. Bait can't hook Gluffy now, so they got to be careful of that as well. But everyone else is still free game. And, uh, yeah, it was very intense. My heart rate was, like, going crazy when I was watching this. And, like, I'm friends with, like, CMG and stuff. Like, they're probably, like, I'm closer with them. But, uh, you know, I like Motomamis, too. They're all really nice guys. Anyways, <laughs> Gene has pull. Um, everyone has their super except for Toast and Luffy. But Luffy has a clone on the ground. So, easy fade. He's just holding that super, bro. He is ready to let go. Like, there's not a lot of time to react when he's in the bush like that. And uh, if one team misses their pull there, like, it's going to throw the game. And here, it's just, like, uh, I think it's so unfortunate for CMG because they could have won, like, they could have killed the RT clown there for sure. But I think the Shelly Super knocked it back. And Bates doing a good job staying alive. And RBM focuses the clone here when it's going to die to the smoke. He uses all his ammo, and he's very close to Super. So I think if he shoots the Gene they can 1v2 Luffy and probably win, but I don't know if they win still, but it's hard in the moment. Like, you can't really blame anyone. Killer's very excited. You know, he should be, like, I'll just save their chance in the world. Starts going crazy. That's funny. But, uh, yeah. So, definitely one of, like, my all-time favorite series in uh, Brawl. You know, it, like, like I said, I'm friends with CMG and stuff probably a bit more than I am. Like, I'm pretty close with like Juan, like I like Fade a lot too, I met him IRL a few times, like Toast, RBM, like cool guys, but uh, you know, you can't like, I'm happy for Motomames, like they're nice guys too, like it probably means a lot to them, and uh, they're a really good team as well, so, you know, I wish like all three of the NA East teams could go, but uh, yeah, it wouldn't be as interesting if it was that way, so definitely make sure you guys watch the NA East Monthly Finals next month, it's gonna be very intense. Only two teams can go to Worlds and LCQ, so there's going to be one very good team who sits it out, which is unfortunate, but that's how it is. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. It is a little different. Uh, I was thinking maybe if you guys like it, I'll do like one or two games a month, something like this style. But uh, yeah, enjoy the gameplay, guys, and congrats to Motomamis. Peace.